What do you think is the most fundamental skill in quilting? I would have to say mastering the quarter inch seam allowance. Hey everyone, it's Ladine from Sugar Stitches Quilt Co. This channel is all about quilting with tips, tricks, and techniques to make you a better quilter. So if it sounds like you and something you may like, then make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you get the notifications when I upload new videos. It may seem like a really small detail, but if you were one of the many quilters that have trouble with it, it's not such a small detail. And you know that if you want all of your blocks uniform and precise in sizing, then a proper seam allowance is the most important skill in that quilt. So if it's so important, why is it so hard to get? With sewing machines today, the process certainly is easier than it used to be. Now, some computerized machines actually have laser guided lights to show you where your quarter inch seam is. And we have all sorts of tools and gadgets that can help us achieve that quarter inch seam allowance. And I'm going to show you some of those today. Have you ever heard the phrase, trust but verify? The same can be said for your quarter inch seam allowance. So while we're going to talk about a lot of different ways that you can set yourself up for success with your quarter inch seam allowance, it's so important to test these methods before you start relying on them in your quilting. So today I'm going to show you some tips and tricks on how to achieve your quarter inch seam allowance and how to set yourself up for success. So let's get started. One of the fastest and easiest ways to achieve a quarter inch seam allowance is with your presser foot or the actual guide on your sewing machine. Now, if your machine did not come with one, they make quarter inch presser feet that you can purchase, whether it's through your dealer or online. Most machines already have the measurements on the actual plate itself, but I have one word of warning for you if you're going to use either one of these, and that's just to make sure that you check the seam allowance before you rely on it. Don't just assume that because the quarter inch mark is here that that is going to give us an accurate quarter inch seam. Practice with a piece of fabric using that line as a guide and then measure and see if it's accurate. Later in this video, I'm going to show you how you can test your blocks to make sure that your seam allowance is accurate. Same thing can be said for the presser foot. I have a Juki and this presser foot comes with the Juki. It is not specifically called a quarter inch presser foot. However, I have found when using this, it actually gives me a perfect scant quarter inch seam, which is where I like to sew. I have another video for you on achieving a scant quarter inch seam if that interests you. But no matter which presser foot or plate you use, which machine you use, I just encourage you to make sure that you test those before you rely on them for accuracy. Another tool that is very popular is this diagonal seam tape made by Cluck Cluck Sew. I'll leave a link for you in the description below. This is extremely popular for a number of reasons, not only in marking your quarter inch seam, but in when you're making half square triangles or stitch and flip corners, instead of marking, you can use a tool like this. But for our purposes today, we're talking about the quarter inch seam allowance. And you can see we have a red line and then two blue lines that are a quarter of an inch away from the red line. So to use this tape, you just simply line the red line up with your needle. Let me zoom in closer for you. I'm gonna raise my presser foot. And what I like to do is just pull out a small amount of the tape. Don't pull out a large amount at first because we're initially just trying to get this lined up correctly. And if it's rolled out too much, it just becomes a little bit more cumbersome. What we wanna do is line up the red line 
with our needle. Now you will be leaving this tape on your machine so you want to make sure that you're not covering up your feed dogs too much and you don't want to cover up your needle the hole for your needle as well. What I like to do just to make sure that I am accurate is I will actually line this all the way up to my needle and the hole in the plate and then I actually cut it back after I've lined it up so that I'm confident that instead of starting back here and trying to line it up and eyeball it, I know that I'm exactly where I need to be. And so we would line this up and you can see I'm lined up with my needle and then I can unroll a little bit more of my tape. I like to hold it in place and make sure that you are staying straight as you unroll the tape down your sewing machine bed. And you can see as I have unrolled, I can put this as far as I need to on my sewing machine bed. And as I mentioned, this tape is really handy for other purposes like half square triangles or stitch and flip corners that you may want to make. So putting it further down on your sewing machine bed also helps as well. And it can also help you line up your fabric before you get to the needle. We don't wanna watch where the needle is going. We want to line up and watch the fabric before we get into the area where it's sewing. So I have my tape lined up and as I mentioned, if you want to cut back some of this tape, you can do that so that you're not covering your feed dogs. And then you have your needle line here. We know this would be going right into our needle and this is our quarter inch mark. And so this is really handy. This roll of tape has lasted me quite a while and sometimes it will start to get a little uneven here. So you can just roll out a new piece of tape and replace it. The best way to test your quarter inch seam is to literally get a quilting ruler, make sure that it has quarter inch marks on the ruler that you're using. So make sure that you can identify your quarter inch line on your quilting ruler and mine is right here. You can see that it's actually this line here marked with a quarter inch. So what we will do is actually use this to measure a quarter inch from the needle position. Don't look at any holes here within your presser foot or your guide. We're looking at the actual needle position. The goal is to measure a quarter of an inch from our needle and then determine where that is here on the plate. Because imagine that our ruler is a piece of fabric and we're feeding this through. What we care about is this line here. Too often people will get distracted looking at their needle when in fact you should be looking at the area just before your needle, what is going into your sewing machine. That's how you can make sure that you're sewing an accurate quarter inch seam. Your needle is just moving up and down, it's not going anywhere. But what is going someplace is your fabric that can move back and forth. So we want to make sure that it stays in the area that it needs to hear. So identifying your right side and your quarter inch from your needle is the most important part. That's the reason for the ruler. So what I like to do, you can see the hole for my needle here, and I want to line that up. Now we're going to be lowering our needle down to make sure that we get this accurately in the right spot. Don't put your needle down too much. Use the hand crank and just lower the needle down slowly. I'm lining this up. You can put your presser foot down if you like. You'll notice that it doesn't go all the way down. And then very gently put your needle down just until it's coming to the line. You don't need to push it down. You're going to break your needle. So just barely on top of the surface there. So we know that it's exactly on the quarter inch mark, if you can see that there. And then we also wanna make sure that our ruler is straight here in this area. Now from here, we've identified where a quarter of an inch is away from our needle, but what do we do now? There's a few different options that I have for you. I've seen some people use masking tape. You simply put the tape or any other tape that you can see easily 
right along the edge of that quarter inch area that we've identified. I've seen some people put multiple pieces here so that it actually is a thicker area. I've seen some people use cardboard or a business card to tape here in this area so that when you're using your fabric along this area, it actually can butt up against the line and help guide your fabric through. If you use something that's too thin, then the chances of you going off a little bit and not staying with this line increase a bit. So you would just wanna make sure. Some people just like the visualization of the line because when I move this ruler out of the way, then you could see that we very easily can see the line and we just wanna make sure that our fabric stays along that line as it's going into the feed dog area and sewing through our machine. Another option is to use washi tape, the same way that I just did along the line here. And you just put that tape and it very easily removes from your sewing machine. So you don't have to worry about it leaving any residue, but you could line that area up as well. The tool that I like to use best with my Juki is this magnetic seam guide. And I got this online. This is an aftermarket part to my Juki. There is a chance that you can't use magnets near a computerized machine. So I always encourage you to read your manufacturer's instructions and guides to make sure that you don't cause any problems with your machine. I have a mechanical machine, so I know that this isn't an issue, but this just has a magnet on it and it's actually a pretty strong magnet. And what I like to do is line up my quarter inch mark. So here we have our side guide. And then I like to just put this right up against my ruler. And so when I move the ruler away, I know that my fabric needs to guide right along this guide here. You can see in relation to where my quarter inch mark is on my plate, is actually just farther over. So I'm glad that I don't rely on my quarter inch marking on my plate because obviously it's not exactly accurate. You can also see that it's near this line. So if I wanted a scant quarter inch, then I most likely could use this line as a guide. And if you see with my presser foot, remember I told you I like this presser foot because it shows me a scant. It's just ever so slightly away from that quarter inch mark. Next, I wanna talk about how we can test our quarter inch seam. I have three two and a half inch square pieces of fabric. What we're going to do is sew these together in a row. With each seam allowance, we're going to test our seam allowance, and then we'll test our final seam allowance. With two of the blocks, line up your edges, and you can see I have the magnetic seam guide on my machine, and it is in the proper position for a quarter inch over from my needle. Simply just going to sew a quarter of an inch and sew these two blocks together. And once our seam is sewn, you can first test by taking your ruler, measuring that seam. We want to line up our raw edge of our fabrics with the ruler. And as you can see, this is exactly a quarter of an inch. So we're on the right track. If this wasn't, then this would be the great opportunity to stop, take this apart, adjust whatever guide you're using, and then try again. Now that we have these two blocks sewn together, I'm going to take my third square and place it right sides together, lining up the raw edges, and then now I'll sew my quarter of an inch down this line. I can also test this side. If I line up my raw edges, I can see that my seam is a perfect quarter of an inch. We have our three blocks together. We've tested each of the two seams that we've sewn, but we want to make sure ultimately that this center block is two inches across because we've sewn a quarter inch seam here and a quarter inch seam here. So our middle section should be two inches because ultimately our seam could be accurate, 
but if we don't have an accurate size of block here, then there may need to be additional adjustments made. And I talk about that in the video that I have on achieving a scant quarter inch seam. Things like fabric and thread can really play a part in achieving a quarter inch seam. So it's nice to know that we have quarter inch seams here. However, the ultimate goal is to make sure that our block is the right size. So let's take this over to my work surface and I'll show you what I mean. Now here we are on my work surface and I have my blocks together. I have pressed the seams open and I encourage you when you're doing this test, press your seams how you would normally press your blocks. I like to press my seams open so I want to make sure that whatever test I do, I press them the same way that I would a regular block because there's no sense in testing a certain way and then doing something different when you go to sew your blocks together. So I have my seams pressed open and we'll take our ruler as before. I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit so you can see this a little bit better. We want to make sure that this center block measures two inches. We lie our ruler on that area. You can see that my block is exactly two inches. I also encourage you to check all the way down as well, because as you're sewing, sometimes you can move your fabric, veer off to one side, and we wanna make sure that we're staying consistent. You can see here that my line is on the two inch mark all the way down the block. So we know that we have sewn an accurate quarter inch seam here and a quarter inch seam here. So now that we've gone through these ways that you can set yourself up for an accurate quarter inch seam allowance, do you feel more confident in your seam allowance or do you have more questions? Drop me a comment below and let me know. Or even if you have some great suggestions of your own, I'd love to hear them. I love hearing about other quilters journeys and things that you may have found and also different notions and things that can make our quilting and piecing journey easier. So let me know about those in the comments as well. If you found this video helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up on it. It allows me to keep creating free content like this for you to help you in your quilting journey. I hope you notice a difference in your quarter inch seam allowance and your piecing skills after watching this video. And I hope that you feel like you've mastered the quarter inch seam allowance, finally. So until next time, keep sewing and creating. Bye for now.